Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Finance. Will the 2014 budget contain specific measures to improve tighter rules on foreign ownership of New Zealand land, businesses and other New Zealand owned assets? And if not, why not? Honourable Bill English. Mr. Speaker, the member will just have to wait until tomorrow to hear what's in the budget. Uh, but I could point out to the member that the uh, nearby market, uh, Australia, has uh, some restrictions, and housing in Australia is relatively more expensive uh, than it is in New Zealand. In terms of the restrictions on overseas buyers of these assets, we think the current framework introduced under the previous government, in fact, I think overseen by the Minister at the time, Winston Peters, uh, strikes about the right balance. Supplementary question, Andrew Williams. Given that as at 31st of December 2013, New Zealand's net international investment position was a deficit of $147.5 billion, equivalent to negative 66.6% of GDP, how is continuing to sell our assets overseas going to solve our debt problem? Uh, well, Honourable Bill Mr Speaker, I'm um, interested the member raises the net international investment position. I think four years ago it was minus 85 per cent of GDP and it's improved more quickly and further than I think anyone anticipated just four or five years ago to minus 65 per cent of GDP. And if it improved further to somewhere around 50 per cent, uh, that would put us uh, around the kind of national norm for an for our type of open economy. So we're actually making quite significant progress, uh, assisted no doubt by the, um, the processes put in place by Winston Peters uh, to ensure that foreign investment in New Zealand was useful for New Zealand. Sub supplementary question, Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, why does the government continue to talk of foreign investment when most foreign takeovers are simply a transfer of ownership that creates no new asset. Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the, um, the, the thing is, with a small open economy, uh, that we generally benefit from being open to other people's capital. They bring in other <coughs> ideas. Uh, foreign companies have turned uh, not too bad at picking businesses in New Zealand that they can, they can grow into something, something better and more productive. Uh, it would be a bit odd to do what all opposition parties are now promising to do, I think, which is essentially stop overseas capital coming into New Zealand. Uh, that is guaranteed to destroy jobs, reduce incomes and destroy wealth. Supplementary question, Andrew Williams. To the Minister, why is the government avoiding developing a comprehensive registry of foreign ownership, if not to hide the true extent of foreign ownership in New Zealand? Hon uh, Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's a matter of uh, only Im imposing more compliance costs if we think there's a benefit that is larger than those costs. Uh, it may be possible to track every single uh, so-called foreign buyer, although a lot of them that look foreign are actually New Zealand residents. A lot of New Zealand, New Zealand citizens actually live offshore. Uh, it would be a fairly large, complex exercise. The government's view is that, in light of the fact that Somewhere around maybe two to four per cent of our housing stock is owned by foreigners, and around two to four per cent of housing sales are likely to foreigners, including expat Kiwis. It's not a large influence on house prices, a much bigger influence are the decisions made by councils to restrict supply, driving up house prices, particularly in our larger cities. Supplementary question, Andrew Williams. To the Minister, will the Government commit to New Zealand First's policy of collecting comprehensive data on the extent of foreign ownership in New Zealand so the public can actually see what land and assets have gone into foreign ownership? Well, Mr Honourable Speaker, Bill that, is, that, that is the uh, least harmful aspect of New Zealand First policy. Its real policy is ban foreign investment of all sorts and, I suspect, ban foreigners. Order. Point of order. Tracy Martin. The Minister has no responsibility for New Zealand First policy order. and it did order. not answer the order. question. Order. 
Order. I don't need assistance, but I invite the member to go back and look at her colleague's question. It asked for comment on New Zealand First policy. Supplementary question. Supplementary, Supplementary question. Order. 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 Yes it, yes, it is going well, yeah. For a um, supplementary, supplementary question, Andrew Williams. To the Minister, is the government's refusal to have the full picture revealed to the public on the true extent of foreign ownership because it knows that the real figure is much higher than the figure they have been citing from the BNZ at 8 per cent and even the inland revenues figure of 11 per cent? And if so, will they finally commit to New Zealand First policy of establishing a land register? First, Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, I stand by the I stand by the rough estimates we've used. The 11 per cent is 11 per cent of investment housing stock, which means about three or four per cent of all housing stock. Uh, but the members should be pleased that the Labor Party have now the, the, the party that's meant to be friendly to the migrant communities has essentially adopted New Zealand First policy of banning foreign investors. Order. Order. Point of order. Order. This is a point of order. Point of I order. seek leave to table a 2013 article titled Economic Inequality in New Zealand, showing that in 2009 New Zealand was 14th order. of order. most unequal of the 34 order. countries order. in the OECD. I just need, I need the source of the article. Uh, it's it's, a, uh, it's uh, authored by Brian Easton, sir. Is it, from a, is it a published in one of the daily papers? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's published in a journal, but I can't remember which order, one. Order, on the basis that it's a Brian Eastern article, it's published in a journal, may not be freely available to members, I will put the leave. Leave is sought to table it. Is there any objection? There is none. It can be tabled. Point of order, Andrew Williams. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave of the House to table a document prepared by the Parliamentary Library showing that properties range, which are rental properties and other properties owned offshore between 6.4 per cent and 11 per cent. Order. The information has been described. Leave us sort to table. Point of order. I'll... Leave us sort to table that particular information prepared by the Parliamentary Library for the members for any objection. There is none that can be tabled. Point of order. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. I seek leave to table the Treasury report, data on foreign ownership of New Zealand housing, showing approximately 22,000 homes, or 1.2 per cent, are owned by people who live overseas, order, including order, New Zealand again, citizens. That's been described well enough. Leave us on now to table this particular Treasury report. Is there any objection to that being tabled? There is none. It can be tabled. Question number nine, Dr Jan Yang. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Health. What is the government...